Counter Narrative News uh, presenting this short piece from a section of an interview with the late Edward Said. Very important in relation to understanding Arab history, people, culture, politics, etc. Edward Said was a, a, a Palestinian, a nominally Christian, a uh, really important figure in kind of radical literature and political advocacy around Palestinian liberation and more broader the situation for Arab people. Now, he, he really importantly stresses that Arab people, like all people, are a very diverse community of people of different languages, also different different religions. Language, obviously, Arabic is the main language and it's the real kind of binding glue historically that creates the community called the quote-unquote Arabs. But within that, there is diversity, there is mixture, there is synchronization around religion, around culture, around food, dress, uh, uh, language, etc. In the struggle against modern European colonialism, colonized people across the world, including the Arab people, were searching for frameworks in which to push back the colonizing mission. Part of reaching out to find a framework was to look at Eurocentric uh, frameworks in themselves. So, for example, the colonized Indian people, uh, colonized by Britain, looked to Germany, pre-Hitlerite, and also Hitlerite Germany, uh, as a, what they thought, what some thought might be a framework to resist colonialism because they saw Germany fighting the bigger colonial powers, including uh, Britain, which was colonizing India, and they saw it as a discipline and big, organized, kind of modern state. Uh, also, Indians and others looked to the kind of colonial Republican politics of what became the United States. Again, uh, it was a state formed in in a revolution against British colonialism. Again, that attracted a lot of people, particularly from the areas colonized by the British. However, generally, as things move forward from that point on, so we're talking about the turn of the century, early, the very start of the 20th century, many liberation movements against colonialism developed more sophisticated and more functional frameworks of people's liberation. But nonetheless, often to the relation to the degree of colonial oppression, some colonized people have internalized certain frameworks of the colonizers politics and world view. This is known by some as coloniality, the influence of coloniality, the influence of colonial ideas becoming internalized by the colonized people. So Edward Said's comments are very important to push back against the internalization of white supremacists and colonial politics amongst the colonized, in this case, particularly the Arab people. And it's very in important when we're exploring and dealing with nationalisms across the Arab world, be it Arab nationalism or the sectional state nationalisms of the Syrian nationalists, Iraqi nationalists, etc. And just trying to kind of deconstruct and then to reconstruct a more healthier model, especially if we see in the context of the of the ongoing infiltration of white nationalist ideas amongst some Arab communities, particularly the Syrian government and the non-Arab uh, government that's in Tehran, uh, in Iran. Hope viewers find this interesting. In what important ways are Arabs different from the stereotypes we heard about? Well, I think the first thing is that Arabs are fantastically diverse. I mean, there are many different kinds of Arabs. I mean, a Syrian is very different from a Moroccan. Uh, there are regional accents. There are traditions completely local to various parts of the Arab world. Uh, traditions of dress, of cuisine, of accent, of dialect, uh, of history. I think that's the most important thing. To think of Arabs as just one large group of screaming fanatics who are practically faceless is, I think, the first uh, myth that has to be set against the reality. The second one is that it is, a, and this is the most important to me, uh, difference between the cliché and the reality, is that the Arabs are the inheritors of an extraordinary civilization, one that stretches back now uh, in, its, in its modern forms for about a millennium and a half. There is a, first of all, there's the language. The Arabic language is one of the, in my opinion, one of the most extraordinary uh, 
constructions of the human mind. Language of poetry. It's a language of poetry, it's a language of mysticism and theology, it's a language of law, it's a language of extraordinary humor, for example, and na narration. I mean, some of the great feats of narrative skill, the Arabian Nights, uh, the travels of Ibn Battuta, etc., are written in Arabic. So there's that. There's al it's also one of the great religions of the world, which is in Arabic. I mean, the, the Quran is the word of God in the Arabic language. And this tradition encompasses such things, not only of the learned traditions that we just mentioned, but architecture, uh, city planning. I mean, for example, the city of Baghdad was considered one of the great summits of Arab art because of the structure, the circular structure of the city, and the way it was constructed with fountains and water. And then the range in geography is fantastic. You have the great civilization of the, above all, in all of this, there is the diversity of many different, uh, not only uh, races, if you like, but also different religions and cultures. That a lot the of sects. A lot of sects. Yeah. A lot of sects. But for example, I happen to come from a Christian minority in the Arab world, which is, there are Christians throughout the Arab world, and right. we consider ourselves Arabs. And even our civilization is Islamic. Uh, that, that, that it's a rich enough civilization to make place for all. The idea of separation between uh, Arabs and the rest of the world is a relatively modern idea.